Здравствуйте, дорогие друзья. Здравствуйте, Good afternoon, коллеги, dear friends, colleagues. Я рад представить At our discussion today, I'm happy to introduce to you our great experts that agreed to discuss how to make the lives of our patients easier. So please welcome Evgeny Kamkin, Deputy Minister of Health of the Russian Federation, Yelena Chernyakova, Chairman and uh, Head of the Federal Compulsory Medical Insurance Fund, Natalia Kolerova, our good friend and a person who leads uh, Navartis Group. So she's president of Navartis Group in Russia and general manager of Oncology Department Russia, Ukraine, and CIS uh, Navartis AG Oncology Department. And uh, an oncologist, our colleague that I have worked with a lot, uh, Vladimir Javrankov, who is today Deputy Minister of uh, Health of the Republic of Tatarstan. And uh, Vladimir is going to share with us the perspective of the region. And our discussion aims at uh, easing the lives of our patients. Uh, we think about it all the time. We understand that we have a lot of patients and their number is growing uh, mostly in uh, the pandemic uh, conditions. I believe you know that uh, we have uh, two chief uh, experts uh, and uh, the responsibility is uh, large on us. All our control figures, uh, irrespective of the pandemic, are the same. So all our meetings uh, and uh, with the call to ease the lives of our patients. We all understand that each of us uh, can find ourselves uh, on the hospital bed. So, therefore, we are striving for easing the lives of the patients. There is personal interest in that. So we all feel that all the deliverables uh, that we have had are really good, and our figures uh, changed uh, very well for the better. We have seen all our oncology service indicators working well, screening programs started uh, being introduced in the regions, but now there are a lot of difficulties all over the world uh, with uh, cancer patients, assistance. A lot of things are changing now. They are changing apart from other things uh, because of the pandemic. And I will give the floor to Evgeny Kamkin, first of all, Deputy Minister of Health of the Russian Federation, who would like uh, to tell us something about uh, the changes we are in for, the changes in the routing. So, Evgeny, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Andrei. Good afternoon, dear participants. Naturally, the year of 2020 somewhat changed our traditional approaches and plans that we had while we were elaborating the federal project of cancer fight, and uh, the main goal was uh, to decrease uh, the mortality from cancer, to influence uh, the number of patients uh, whose uh, disease is uh, diagnosed at earlier stage, to increase uh, the share of patients uh, that uh, are being treated uh, in an outpatient manner for 5-10 years. Together with uh, our distinguished experts, the regional 
authorities. We adopted the respective parameters and we are moving towards achieving the goals that were set as national goals and tasks that are also stipulated in the order of the President of the Russian Federation. But uh, because of the coronavirus infection, new coronavirus infection spread in 2020, we have had certain changes. When we made all the decisions connected with uh, medical assistance organizations to cancer patients, you know that uh, there were certain acts of the Russian Federation government uh, and uh, rulings uh, of the Ministry of Health of the Russian Federation. Mm. Cancer patients uh, have always uh, received uh, special attention. And in all the documents and regulations, it was clearly set out that uh, medical organizations that resort assistance uh, to cancer patients, mainly those uh, that need comprehensive treatment connected with chemotherapy, and uh, special timelines uh, and stages of uh, administering chemotherapy drugs and it changed as well. Not all the volume planned uh, earmarked for this uh, category of uh, citizens uh, were preserved. And according to preliminary data, now we are gathering uh, reporting from medical organizations that take part uh, in uh, federal project implementation, and resorting assistance uh, to cancer patients. First, we can say that we managed not to have an increase of mortality from cancer, but uh, we managed to put it down a little bit. And analysis of uh, assistance uh, given shows uh, that uh, we increase uh, the number of courses that cancer patients received, uh, chemotherapy courses, uh, and uh, the schemes uh, have become more comprehensive and uh, pretty expensive uh, drugs are now used, uh, and uh, the quality of diagnostics uh, of cancer is improved, specificity of tumors, analysis have also improved, and high-quality therapy selection has also taken place. You know that a number of events have taken place and a number of activities. We have discussed many times a federal project topic, and I would not like to go into detail on all of the aspects of it, but one of the activities was connected with upgrading the infrastructure that we have. Now, over 90 organizations in the country provide assistance uh, to cancer patients. And uh, during the year, all the events connected with uh, upgrading medical equipment, uh, the inventory of uh, these organizations uh, have been up and running, and uh, they were done to the full extent. All of the equipment uh, was received by these organizations. They were outfitted with them, and the methods of treatment uh, that these organizations employ, including surgical methods uh, and arc therapy, have stayed in place as well. And restrictions connected with resetting these organizations or closing them down were not uh, seen by us. So the plans set within the federal project of fighting uh, cancer for 2020 were achieved. 
However, it does not uh, let us uh, stop or slow down in any way. We are continuing this uh, project, and uh, we hope that uh, the end goal uh, initially set in the order of the president will be achieved. Thank you very much, Yevgeny Gennadievich. In our further discussion, we will touch upon some other questions that uh, have not been touched upon yet. Naturally, you cannot do anything without funds, and such hard thing as cancer cannot be assisted, treated without funds. We understand that even in the developed uh, countries, uh, they have certain shortage. But still, today we can see strengthening financial component, and uh, it is uh, assisted by the federal fund that accumulates all the assistance and distributes it to the regions. So, Yelena Evgenieva, could you comment on what uh, was going on in this hard year of 2020? The parameters of uh, quality performance of the national project uh, were mentioned by Evgeny. And uh, naturally, our main goal is to provide uh, funds uh, for cancer treatment. That's why I would like to voice some important parameters. In 2020, within the implementation of federal project, uh, Funds for cancer treatment has increased by 35 percent almost, and cancer patients assistance is a separate budget line in state guarantees of ours, and to strengthen this area. We have that, and for the regions to have control parameters to provide medical assistance in that uh, area, we include it into the plan as well. And we state that the budget parameters that uh, were implied uh, by the state uh, guarantees uh, program and uh, volumetric indicators were fully implemented. 102.2 percent is implementation of our plan. And we have over one, 200 uh, and 70 billion rubles, uh, 115 billion are the direct transfers from the budget, and they are allocated uh, to increase the quality of uh, cancer treatment and chemotherapy. We understand that anti-tumor drug therapy takes a sizable place in all uh, expenses, uh, that is 75 percent, and uh, arc therapy accounts for less percentage. And uh, the average uh, cost uh, of uh, treatment, uh, the average case uh, treatment uh, has increased by one third as well. And uh, now we have increased uh, the courses, the number of courses by 5.7 percent. And uh, we increase targeted uh, drugs and we extend uh, the scheme of uh, drug therapy all the time as well. In 2021, the dynamics of increasing funding for medical assistance uh, is uh, going to continue. We have uh, over 300 billion rubles uh, funds, uh, and uh, within the budget parameters, uh, the index of uh, consumer price uh, grow. And uh, salaries is not over 5%. Uh, therefore, we can see twofold increase of uh, costs per cancer assistance that uh, does not simply cover the salary and consumer price uh, index growth, uh, but also increases volumes and quality of cancer treatment. 135 billion, that is 20 billion more. This year, we have federal budget. Uh, allocations for cancer treatment. Within the base program, we have a separate segment today that has federal medical organizations and uh, medical assistance uh, provided by the federal organizations uh, to cancer patients, among others. Uh, and it is a separate level of guarantees. And together with the Ministry of Health, uh, we have adopted uh, an order on 
the uh, criteria of referring uh, patients uh, to clinics. And we hope that uh, this decision will lead uh, to better accessibility of cancer assistance uh, to patients uh, using uh, better technologies, uh, top-notch technologies that we currently have in the federal clinics. And uh, to pay for medical assistance in federal clinics, uh, almost 20 billion rubles are earmarked for this year. If we talk about 2021, we can say that we have uh, perfected uh, approaches to paying for medical assistance within chemotherapeutical treatment. Uh, we have uh, pointed out the uh, cost of drugs uh, to be able to have uh, differentiated approaches, uh, bearing in mind all the coefficients uh, that are different uh, from case to case. And uh, we have uh, 169 schemes of treatment uh, for 2020 and over 1,400 for 2021. We have extended a list uh, of uh, drugs, uh, vital and essential drugs, and together with the chief uh, specialist in the Ministry of Health and the Institute, we have analyzed and substantiated the new cost of um, ARC uh, therapy that uh, clearly corresponds to uh, the costs on uh, the treatment itself. And these events uh, helped uh, us extend uh, the clinical recommendations uh, and uh, if uh, last year we received uh, many claims uh, in terms of uh, deficient volumes on oncogematology, now the range has extended. We have uh, included uh, from 6 uh, to 13, so we, from, th from 3 to 16, sorry, uh, is uh, the range of uh, diseases that we have increased. I believe that uh, in our further discussion we will also talk about the monitoring that we are carrying out uh, and uh, the fund pays attention to medical care. We have a separate order on collecting, reporting, and today we can see every complete case and uh, on every patient. We can uh, monitor how temporal parameters were met and uh, uh, whether the timely and duly person was uh, uh, sent uh, to um, the medical monitoring in special organization. And, uh, we also are joining uh, VMIS uh, today and our data on uh, treated uh, cases are analyzed uh, today by us uh, alongside the data that we receive from medical organizations uh, cost-wise and deficiency-wise as well. Thank you very much. Thank you for quoting the figures. Without figures, you cannot talk about uh, financing. Figures uh, set us uh, in a good mood, first of all, because uh, they prove that we can use uh, this uh, treatment to our patients and uh, any progressive uh, movement uh, uh, under these difficult uh, financial conditions uh, on the backdrop of the pandemic uh, sets uh, an optimistic tune, I would say. And, uh, Natalia, I will uh, skip you, meanwhile, because uh, you might have a totally different uh, perspective uh, at uh, this uh, but we did not agree what uh, we will say. But still, now I would like uh, to ask uh, the people who are actually on the front line of cancer patient treatments, because that is where the patients arrive, and after that only there is the routing of the patients. So, Vladimir, how can you see the process from the region, a large region, right? So what is going on there now? Thank you for giving me the floor. Of course, the year was very difficult. 
новая коронавирусная инфекция выращивалась на протяжении многих десятилетий. Так вот, если говорить о, например, early treatment centers, talking about Tatarstan Republic, we managed to achieve those those results which we can boast of thanks to this centralization. Of course, we'd like to continue in this respect and to improve this service based on this idea. We expect a new order. The drafts which were available, of course, makes us feel very positive. This uh, referring system, which is stipulated in the principles of this referring system, uh, stipulated in this new order, in this new framework, did not uh, have something uh, drastic. All the regulation and guidelines existing before uh, stipulated this routine system. So uh, every patient from an um, early stage of early treatment center knows their path, know where to go to. But nevertheless, regardless of such routine system, the patient is um, at liberty to choose any center to apply for treatment. This is a major provision talking about the patient-centric approach. The only point I'd like to dwell on, if it is possible, in these uh, regulations, uh, there is a term for a treatment at every stage that did provide a huge support to the whole oncological service. We uh, became more disciplined thanks to these timelines. We were accurate at routine patients. But as of today, we do understand that decomposing, decomposing these uh, microprocesses, probably we need to be more, more flexible in terms of uh, timelines. But this is just to be discussed. Sep separate regions uh, have their own peculiarities. This is the uh, geography, the resource capacity of the region. Uh, paramedic and obstetrician units. And the only thing we need to look at is the uh, willingness and desire of the patient. So as a element as an issue for discussion. Apart from that, of course, we're expecting a comprehensive, vertically integrated um, IT in Medicare would like it to be associated with supporting regions. So this system will allow us to monitor every patient at every stage of treatment at the moment. If you allow me to say a couple of words uh, about the global picture, now we are approaching the stage from our perspective when the money allocated for oncological treatment made its role and is going to be contributing in future, but obviously within several days 
we will have to input uh, screening issues and early um, detection, which allows us to increase the level of the initial stage. So we um, believe that it will allow to have specialized service in special service, a patient with uh, some screening results, and this is a critical component which would allow us to follow all the timelines. Apart from that, there are two notions which we are going to use whatever we do within the years to come. The first notion is the responsibility of the citizens for their health. Without this um, component, there is no single medical system which is going to handle the situation. If the population is going to be responsible for the, if the people are going to be responsible for their state of health, then, then everything will be all right. And the second component is the economic feasibility and efficiency of those measures implemented today. Together with uh, RANEPA and Allianz Consulting Company in 2019 uh, did a huge work. We calculated all the patients which were in our cancer register starting 2013 2000, till 2018, and we calculated all those economic losses because of cancer detected the patients. Uh, with a particular result, with a particular outcome. So Tatarstan Republic lost about 200 uh, billion rubles uh, due to malicious tumor, due to the cancer. If we go back to the issue of screening and early detection, this is a very effective investment which would allow us to mitigate all those expenses and losses. That is in brief. We are very optimistic about 2021. Since in 2020, after mobilization, we saw our bottlenecks and we detected uh, our possible growth points and um, targets to invest in to have the maximum effect. We do hope that in 2021 on those endeavors and all those initiatives um, will be implemented and will be successful. Thank you very much. I know that being a deputy head of a cancer center, you did a great job. These issues are very acute. Now, uh, distinguished Natalia, it's your turn. Please, could you dwell on your vision how to, to improve the situation for the patients in terms of routine system, in terms of their lives? Uh, thank you very much, distinguished uh, Andre and your colleagues for that. Um, wonderful atmosphere and dialogue for cooperation, which we have in um, oncology disease treatment, cancer treatment. This is a very uh, sophisticated and comprehensive issue, both socially, economically, and no respect. It's a huge burden on the population. We do understand that the cancer diseases um, exacerbating, mostly connected with the life expectancy increase. This is the trend, which is a reality for a uh, hundred years to come. Until we go into great a technology to solve these issues well. We have a lot of technologies in place which allow us to to impact uh, the um, such cancers as the lung cancer, melanoma, the kidney uh, cancer, and different types of cancer which have a huge burden on the population. They have clinical treatment right now, and all these 
patients um, considering the right detection allow people to live longer, not only in terms of months, but in terms of years. And in Russia, we do apply these technologies, and it's a great, go a greater good. And being a representative of pharmaceutical industry, I do expect these technologies coming more and more to our life, regardless of the pandemic situation, regardless of uh, booms and busts in the economy. The scientific movement uh, with Russian physicians' participation is very important. All our specialists and patients uh, take part in uh, clinical trials. Our company is number one in terms of clinical trials in our country. And I do believe that it is very important. And we are doing our best for all the technological platforms, amounting to four right now, targeted therapy, uh, immune biology, radiotherapy, and genome uh, cells therapy. All these th platforms should be in place and should provide the access to the Russian patients, which is very important. Apart from that, we need to sustain the price. All the, all the treatments should be affordable, so how to embrace things which cannot be embraced. So Elena should be able to calculate all those things and how to give the opportunity and the best access to the best treatment in particular category. So all the action, regardless of the pandemic situations, affected by pharmaceutical companies uh, jointly with the antitrust service, is a very important step forward. How we can see this essential and very important uh, drugs inclusion how we're working together with the ministry, with the society, uh, that demonstrates the right movement, maybe to innovative pricing model, which we need to pilot with uh, private clinics, going to become a part of our general clinical treatment practice. During the pandemic uh, time, the uh, cancer patients were probably in the most difficult situation. They are at risk, they couldn't leave their house, they were to uh, isolate themselves. And I do think that those technological platforms which emerged and which help us today assisted in uh, treatment services in pharmaceutical companies together with the Association of Oncologists of Russia, did a lot to help the patients under the circumstances to get the access to medication, to treatment, to get to the clinic. And it is great, since we have not only, only dialogue in place, but understanding each other and the readiness to help each other. Moreover, I'd like to go out on the future, which you have mentioned, talking about the registers and all those technological opportunities to control and to uh, allocate investment in oncological service development, in medication supply, in medical service provision. I do believe that this is the future. We've been working out a legal framework, which is effective in Russia right now, for the specialists and the insurance companies, the Minister of Medicare, to have an opportunity to look at the picture and to calculate how to treat uh, cancer, what is most economically feasible for this state, and which medical assistance is most efficient. For pharmaceutical industry, we believe it to be a future. All the business models are based uh, on this mindset. We have a wide uh, international experience. In 
In Germany, there is a priority for the government to digitalize medical assistance and to understand uh, which social uh, footprint this investment has. I believe that the best practice is consideration and piloting our interest in regional practices is a very, very important thing to do and very important area to develop. I don't think that our vision is different from all the participants of a federal program of fight against cancer disease. We believe ourselves to be a partner and we do our utmost to um, improve life for the patient. Every patient should understand that it is a disease which can be cured. It is the thing to be done. There are all the opportunities in place. Thank you very much, uh, Natalia. Who'd like to dwell on those orders and protocols which we have? This type of transparency led to long-term long discussion in social networks. In oncology, over the last years, uh, there has been a huge transparency in place. We are discussing everything on different platforms. We look at things many times, at many angles. And the current system is quite sophisticated and quite fine-tuned. Of course, there are always proponents. There is a huge, huge area. Do you believe that any order can be flawless? Any protocol can be flawless? I believe there is always room for improvement. So the development itself of Medicare, medical science, will require change order. As new technologies will be introduced, it will require changes to approaches, to the systems, routine schemes, as the scalability is always an issue. New technologies are applied by major drivers and major uh, participants, and then it is shared and it is applied everywhere. Of course, the introduction of such technologies is important. We see the active development of digital medicine and digital uh, Medicare, which doesn't require the physical presence of a patient. It will require changes to the approaches and the uh, systems, uh, putting standards, equipment of the medical uh, entities, and the structural changes. We've mentioned a new order, the work of which has been very intense over the last year, and we tried to bring together different opinions, professionals and expert community. The Minister of Healthcare, the regulator in healthcare, in terms of regulations and norms provision, which are to be followed by all the medical entities in the area of the Russian Federation. This is a direct provision, strict provision of the law. Nevertheless, the principles which will underline this uh, legal framework related to the rights protection of a patient himself. There is a provision stipulating for development and routine system, the list of medical entities providing assistance to cancer patients, but which shouldn't prejudice the rights of the patient to opt for a particular uh, center, clinic, or entity. This is what should be mm, explained once again. We do not step aside from those rights of the patient, which uh, are guaranteed by this law. As for the requirements in new order, this, these are the requirements for medical entities developed by our professional community, led by distinguished uh, uh, Mr. Stelidi, our um, specialists, 
the order is underlined by the principles for high quality and access to medical assistance. We see that the better quality only is possible through particular requirements for structural um, branches and a minimal standards for the medical equipment in these entities, requirements for the staff and physicians. In 2020, the number of oncologists increased by 7.5 percent, 7 point something, which should be regarded as very positive. And naturally, uh, the head count, the uh, oncologists uh, are really the most expensive resource uh, and it is hard to reproduce when we have uh, losses uh, among uh, medical professionals and the number of uh, oncologists uh, we hope uh, every year will increase thanks to popularization of this job. In terms of uh, elaboration of this order, really a lot of effort was made, and uh, we hope uh, that uh, we will not stop on that. We would uh, further on introduce new technologies and improve uh, approaches and organization of uh, cancer patients' assistance. And I would also like to mention another order, the order of early treatment centers, uh, observation of cancer patients that we changed in 2020, where we clearly stipulated the periods that cancer patients have to go to the centers at, because it is important not to lose even a single patient. They have to visit the centers timely and duly to be able to have the therapy adjusted and to receive the best and top notch uh, methods to adjust uh, the drug therapy if uh, the cancer process goes on. So it is also a critical thing and uh, it uh, makes uh, medical workers, if uh, the diagnosis is verified, uh, to register cancer patients within three days and then uh, there is uh, certain cycles, periods, uh, not less than three times uh, in the first year, then uh, not uh, less than uh, once uh, uh, in half a year, then not less than once a year. And an additional measure, that is a system of uh, benefits and bonuses uh, to medical workers uh, for diagnose the cancer. So those uh, medical workers uh, that diagnose the cancer, not uh, simply set uh, the that they believe that there is cancer, but if the cancer is diagnosed and verified and the cancer patient starts uh, receiving insistence, cancer assistance, these uh, uh, doctors, physicians will receive bonuses uh, from the medical insurance fund. This year, this uh, amendment will be implemented. So we hope that the set of measures, including upgrading the primary chain of uh, health care, that uh, first of all has uh, activities uh, connected with increasing the accessibility of this assistance and increasing quality of this assistance will also help us uh, identify cancer correctly and uh, prescribe the treatment efficiently. So all these activities, all these approaches and changes in the approaches, uh, the representatives of the ministry and farm industry and our professional community, I hope will let us stay assured that uh, the tasks that were posed to us and the industry as such as a national goal will be achieved. Thank you very much. And you know, uh, happily, even bad things uh, end, but uh, regrettably good things end as well, and our discussion is among that. So can you voice just uh, a couple of words? What 
what is the most important thing uh, for this year in uh, the job that you had? I would like uh, us uh, to be not only the wallet, but also protectors of the patients. I dream of partnership and dialogue, regional system, and uh, stay in tune and move ahead. Thank you very much. Uh,